everyone, welcome to my presentation on CSS and display properties. In this presentation, we'll be focusing on different CSS layout and different display properties that will make your website look great. And what you should use, the, the conventions which should be used while you're designing and developing a web application. Right here, we have the contents that we'll be focusing on, which is display properties. Basically, block, inline, flex blocks, and grid with CSS positioning. If it's quick image, back in those days when there was no CSS, we used to use tables for everything and then try to accomplish as much as possible using the table layout. I'm going to show you a quick photograph in the next presentation, in the next slide, basically that shows Facebook before and after. On the left, we see Facebook before. Basically, Facebook before was used, uh, tables were used to showcase the screen, to show elements on the screen. We see everything in blocked format and it doesn't look as beautiful as Facebook on the right. Facebook on the right is being used with CSS, it's being developed with CSS. And then we see better positioning and we see better color. And then you see a better layout than Facebook on the left. And while building or writing CSS, we need to understand the different display properties in CSS and HTML. The div, the h1 to h6, the p, the form, the header, the footer, and the section are all examples of block elements which can be used in HTML. And then you could target all this using CSS. Well, for the inline element, we have span, we have a tag, we have b, and then we have img tags. These are all inline elements and then they don't span the full width of the screen except you use uh, your CSS to change the way you want to view those items. Also we have the display non property. The display non property is being used most commonly with JavaScript when we want to show or hide a particular element based on how the user interacts with the website. We also have the visibility hidden. The visibility hidden element basically it removes the element from the screen. Now it doesn't remove the element totally, it just makes it sure that nobody can see the element, but the element still exists in that exact same place where it used to be. Now we have other CSS classes such as grid or display properties such as grid. Now in grid, I'm just going to play this video. We see for grid, when you put place item center, automatically we place it to the center. No matter how we pull the screen or reduce the screen, they always all look the same way. Also, we have a constructed flexbox grow shrink and base width in the presentation. Here, you see, this is a flex box, this is a CSS display flex property. You can change it, you can reduce the size of the screen, but it just remains the same. And then the smaller the screen goes, it becomes more mobile responsive to the next screen width. We also have the min max or the sidebar layout, as I would love to call it. In the sidebar layout, you see the sidebar basically stays at a particular position and then it doesn't reduce. Other parts of the page or the screen basically reduce but because we set a minimum width of 150px and a maximum width of 25% which means the bigger the screen is a bit 25% it will not go above 25% and no matter how you reduce the screen or the smaller the screen it's gonna be at the minimum of 150% sorry px. We also have the pancake stack as the grid template rules. So for pancake stack, basically everything is based on each other. They are kind of aligned step by step. So we see in the pancake stack, nothing basically shifts. Everything remains the same exact way they are. And then nothing removes and nothing shifts from the current position. We also have classic holy grail these are all names I just gave them, or basically, yeah, which are giving them. These are not the standard industrial names for these things. 
So I'm going to play this. So here we see the layout, how the main content increases and reduces, but the other, the right and the left sidebar remains intact the way they are based on how much text you put into them, the increase or the decrease. For the 12 span column, which is more mostly if you use um, Bootstrap, if you use the uh, Foundation, Tailwind CSS, they all have this kind of grid like system that basically one spans normally the 12 spans through the whole screen, while six spans half of the screen. And then just like that, it reduces to it gets to one, and then it doesn't span as much. So here are a few changes, uh, layout changes, which I feel if they were properly implemented, it could show a lot of disparity. Right here, we see that on the left, we see uh, a Twitter follow uh, peel, cat peel, and then we see how it's displayed on the left. And you see, this is uh, everything is, you don't know the disparity, there's no contracts, everything is just there. And then when building a layout or a UI layout, it's important to be able to transmit your message to the user properly. And the user should be able to understand what it is you're trying to say. And then which ones, which, uh, which text is of more important and then which text is of less important. Right here on the left, we can hardly say which one is of more importance and which one is of less important. But on the right, according to what was done by Refactor UI here, here the name is bolder and then the person's username is smaller and then it's a different color from the name and then on the icons, they used two different types of icons and then they also made that a different color. Now, basically, the whole idea of all this is that if you look at the one on the right, it looks way better than the one on the left because they bold in some of the figures and some of the text so that you can see and make this parity and say, okay, this is more important, I should focus on this and then these things are less important, I shouldn't focus on those other things. We also see another one in navigation design. It's easier to do the navigation on the left because it's just straightforward. We just put in a bunch of things straight up there and then that's it. But you see the navigation on the right, you see how beautiful it looks because it was more spaced out, it's taking more space and then they have icons to make it more engaging. So when you look at it, you're like, okay, this is what this means and then this is what that means and this is how they want me to interact with these things. So for me, I feel like a good layout doesn't need to be explained. If you've designed a very beautiful layout, you don't need to explain it. Because if you have to explain a good layout, it simply means it's terrible. That simply means the users are finding it very difficult to understand what exactly it is you're trying to say there. And always, always, always use a photograph, use a picture when you're trying to explain in web development is very important because the flip the picture reinforces the concepts of what you're trying to say. The pictures, the icons, they make your layout stand out as you are trying to do a couple of things. So those are my resources where I used uh, resources I picked out from. I got them from Refactor UI, which you can go back and look at. They have very beautiful explanation of CSS layouts in more detail, web dev layouts as well, and then google.com obviously. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. I hope you understood a bit of what CSS layouts and display properties look like. Thank you very much.